Good morning, everyone. Which country in the world consumed the most tea per capita in the year 2016? Germany. That is correct. And how do we know that? Big data tells us this information. As William Edward Deming says, in God we trust, all others must bring data. My name is Mariam Yasmin, and today I'm going to talk about the buzzword big data. When laymen hear about the word big data, their immediate reaction is big data has something to do with uh, mathematicians, IT and computer professionals, or scientists. But this is not true. Big data is all about public. Big data is generated by public. Big data is used for public. Big data is what we do. Whatever we do is leaving a digital footprint. In other words, we can say that big data is a byproduct of technological advancement. According to a survey, the world is producing approximately 650 million publicly available posts on social media every day. In this digital era, most of us have access to internet, mobile applications. If you are using any of that, you are very much part of the big data. The digital companies are offering different products, search engines, maps, online shopping, social media. And all these companies keep record of your personal data. That includes age, gender, geographical location, interest, behavior patterns, etc. Why do they do that? Why do they keep record of your personal data? Because the business model of these companies is purely based on big data. Let's say Uber. Uber does not own a single car. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram do not make computers. Amazon, eBay, Alibaba, they do not produce the product they are selling. Yet, they manage to generate the revenue of billion dollars. Now the question is, how big is the big data? Big data is actually not about the size or volume of the data. It is how we utilize the information and insights obtained from the data. Big data is a vacuum. Big data is a pile of numbers unless certain analytical tools are applied on it to convert into useful information. I will share a few examples from our daily life that you can easily observe. Let's say you buy a laptop on Amazon. You will see recommendations saying that customer who buy this laptop also buy this laptop bag, this docking station, this mouse, this keyboard. And another example I will share about my thesis. I was writing my thesis on big data analytics capabilities of the firm. I was using keywords as big data and business analytics on different search engines and databases. I noticed that every time Google navigate my search query to other websites, I'm seeing a lot of advertisement from different universities offering specialized programs in big data and business analytics. Not just that, Every time I play a video on YouTube, you remember that uh, advertisement that they play before the start of your video that you can skip after five seconds? Those uh, advertisements were mostly about some vendors offering some uh, software packages of data analysis. The other day, I was talking to my friend who had an opinion that the email service providers do not have access to our the content of our emails. But it's again not true, because if you notice that every time we receive an email, at the bottom of that email, there are certain possible options to respond to that email. Those responses are standardized, but according to the context of your email. So the content of our emails are also accessible by the email service providers. These are just daily life examples. Applications of big data are unlimited. In fact, public health can also be studied with big data. A team of PhD scholars at University of California, San Francisco, 
studied the symptoms of eye diseases based on the data collected through search queries made on Google and hashtags on Twitter. In fact, the influenza, the disease influenza and other epidemiological diseases, diseases related to eyes and brains can also be studied the similar sets of data. It has become a very common practice these days to go to search engine and search about everything in our daily life. It has also become a very common practice to post on social media about all our activities. What we are doing, what we are eating, what we are reading, where we are traveling to. Even when we are sick, we make posts like that. Hashtag sick, hashtag fever, hashtag flu, hashtag not feeling well, things like that. So public health departments, with the help of big data, can see the increasing tendency of these search queries and hashtags and can forecast the spread of epidemics in certain geographical region. Not just that, the early detection of these diseases can prepare healthcare center, prepare better beforehand of the upcoming situation. It can also help public prepare better by taking extra preventive measures. And of course, it is cost effective. It sounds a bit uh, uncomfortable and unhappy situation that all our activities are being recorded and whatever we do is being stored in this company's databases. And when someone gets to know about this structure for the first time, their immediate reaction is like, oh, we feel being violated. Actually, big data is for good. Big data is a virtuous circle. It benefits both the user and the provider. The data obtained through public is used to understand the behavior patterns and interests of public so that refined information and better products can be offered to the public. Of course, it has certain disadvantages. Disadvantages related to ethical issues of uh, collecting the data and usage of that data. Issues related to privacy. But disadvantages of uh, these databases and this data collection can be addressed by taking extra measures, like we can increase the transparency. And public awareness is a way to increase transparency. We can educate public uh, about the business models and data policies of these companies. Apparently, these companies are showing their, public policy, uh, their data policies publicly. Every time we create an online account, after giving all our personal information, at the bottom, before proceeding further, we are supposed to read a document called Terms and Condition and click, I read and agree with the Terms and Condition. That Terms and Condition document is actually about the data policies and the extent of liability of those companies. But the problem with that Terms and Condition document is it is very long, and it is written in very small font size. That reduces the motivation to read it. So my question is from the audience now, how many of you actually read that terms and condition document before proceeding the further and saying that I read and agree the terms and condition document? No one? Okay. That's quite an accurate <laughs> representation of the entire population. So according to a survey conducted by Business Insider, 91% of the users who tap I agree on the terms and condition document before proceeding further, they don't actually read the terms and condition document. And for the users between the age of 18 to 34, the rate of acceptance of the terms and condition document without even reading is 97%. Public awareness is important. Public awareness can force these digital companies to behave more ethical and transparent. As marketing says, aware customers are better customers. So be aware and be better. Thank you for listening. <laughs>